8 The Terrible Triumvirate Revelation 12, 1 13, 18 Drawing near how do the media and Hollywood films portray supernatural evil and demonic activity? Is this accurate according to the Bible's view? Your response here Have you ever been in a situation or around a person that seemed to epitomize evil? Describe your experience of coming face, to, face, either literally or figuratively, with such blatant, intense wickedness. Your response here What speculations have you heard about the identity of the Antichrist? Your response here The context Our world is the theater where God's glorious story of redemption is played out. Satan and his demonic hosts have attacked the human race, turning the earth into the main battleground in their cosmic war against God, the holy angels, and the elect. This study focuses on the terrible three enemies to come, Satan, the dragon, Antichrist, the first beast, and the false prophet, the second beast. The beasts represent the final Antichrist, whose career spans the same time period as the seal and trumpet judgments. In the future, Satan will serve God's purpose by being permitted to launch another deadly assault against the human race. That attack will take place during the Great Tribulation. He and his demonic forces will unsuccessfully battle Michael and the heavenly host, that is, the holy angels of God. As a result of their defeat, the devil and his demons will be permanently cast down to the earth. With his theater of operations then restricted and his time running out, Satan will marshal all of his malevolent, fallen angels in an all-out attempt to deceive and destroy the souls of men. Chapters 12-14 are actually a digression in John's vision, taking readers back through the tribulation from Satan's perspective. These chapters are filled with difficult apocalyptic imagery and symbolism. Take time to read the study notes next to the passage for further explanation and interpretation of these things. Keys to the text Satan the name Satan, meaning adversary or enemy, appears especially in Job and the Gospels. The term devil comes from a Greek verb meaning to slander or to falsely accuse. The Bible identifies him as a murderer, a liar, a roaring lion seeking to devour, the god of this evil age, the tempter, the dragon, the serpent, and the accuser of the brethren, Rev. 12, 10. His accusations against believers are unsuccessful because Christ is our advocate, 1 John 2, 1. The Lord provides his saints with sufficient armor to combat and thwart the adversary, f. 6. Ultimately, Satan's power over Christians is already broken and the war is won through Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, which forever conquered the power of sin and death. Antichrist a false prophet and evil being who will set himself up against Christ and the people of God in the last days before the second coming of Christ. Used only in the writings of John in the New Testament, the term refers to one who stands in opposition to all that Jesus Christ represents, 1 John 2, 18, 22, 4, 3, 2 John 7. John wrote that several antichrists existed already in his day false teachers who denied the deity and the incarnation of Christ but that the supreme antichrist of history would appear at some future time. Paul called him the man of sin and the lawless one, 2 Thess. 2. This man is not Satan, although Satan is the force behind him. He exalts himself, declaring himself to be God and demanding the worship of the world. In this act of satanic self, deification, he defies God. Antichrist, the first beast, will be primarily a political and military leader, but the false prophet, second beast, will be a religious leader. Politics and religion will unite in a worldwide religion of worshipping the Antichrist, see Rev. 17, 19, 15, 17. Unleashing the text read 12, 1, 13, 18 noting the keywords and definitions next to the passage. Revelation 12, 1 13, 18, NKJV, 12, 1 Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Sign, V. 1, a symbol pointing to something else, this is the first of seven signs in the last half of Revelation, CV. 3. 13, 13 14, 15, 1, 16, 
14, 19, 20, a woman, v. 1, this is not an actual woman, but a symbolic representation of Israel, pictured in the Old Testament as the wife of God, Hose. 2, 16. Three other symbolic women appear in Revelation, 1, Jezebel, who represents paganism, 2, 20, 2, the Scarlet Woman, 17, 3, 6, symbolizing the apostate church, and, 3, the wife of the Lamb, 19, 7, symbolizing the true church. That this woman does not represent the church is clear from the context. Clothed with the sun. Moon under her feet. Twelve stars, v. 1, being clothed with the sun speaks of the glory, dignity and exalted status of Israel, the people of promise who will be saved and given a kingdom. The picture of the moon under her feet possibly describes God's covenant relationship with Israel, since new moons were associated with worship, 1 Kron. 23, 31, 2 Kron. 2, 4, 8, 13, Ezra 3, 5, P.S. 81, 3. The twelve stars represent the twelve tribes of Israel. 2 Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Cried out. In pain, v. 2, Israel, often pictured as a mother giving birth, C.I.S.A. 26, 17 18, 54, 1, 66, 7 12, has agonized and suffered for centuries, longing for the Messiah to come and destroy Satan, sin, and death, and usher in the kingdom. 3 And another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great, fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. Great, fiery red dragon, v. 3, the woman's mortal enemy is Satan, who appears as a dragon thirteen times in this book, cv. 9, 20, 2. Red speaks of bloodshed. Seven heads. Ten horns. Seven diadems, v. 3. This figurative language depicts Satan's domination of seven past worldly kingdoms and ten future kingdoms. C 13, 1, 17, 9, 10. Satan has ruled and will rule the world until the seventh trumpet blows, 11, 15. He has inflicted relentless pain on Israel, desiring to kill the woman before she could bring forth the child that would destroy him. For his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. A third of the stars of heaven, v. 4. Satan's original rebellion resulted in one, third of the angelic host joining his insurrection and becoming demons. To devour her child, v. 4. Unable to prevent the virgin birth of Christ, Satan tried to kill the child in a general massacre of male children commanded by Herod. 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. A male child, v. 5. Jesus Christ in his incarnation was of Jewish descent. Despite Satan's efforts to destroy Israel and the Messianic line, Jesus' birth took place as predicted by the prophets. Rod of Iron, v. 5. Describes Jesus' coronation as king over the nations of the world, c. 11, 15, 19, 15. Her child was caught up to God, v. 5. Christ's ascension is in view. Acts 1, 9, Hebrew. 1, 1, 3. 6 Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Wilderness, v. 6 God will protect Israel from Satan by hiding her in the wilderness, perhaps in the region of Moab, Ammon, and Edom, east of Palestine. Interestingly, those countries will be specifically spared from the Antichrist's attack against the Holy Land, see Dan. 11, 41. 1260 days, v. 6, at the midpoint of the tribulation, the Antichrist breaks his covenant with Israel, 
puts a stop to temple worship, sets up the abomination of desolation, Dan. 9, 27, Matt. 24, 15, and devastates Jerusalem, 11, 2. At that time, many Jews flee for their lives, Matt. 24, 16, 22. God will preserve them during the last 1,260 days, 40, 2 months, 3, and, 1, half, years, constituting the Great Tribulation, C3, 10, 6, 1, 9. 7 and war broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, war broke out in heaven, v. 7. The tumultuous events on earth during the tribulation find their counter, part in heaven. A state of war has existed since the fall of Satan, cv. 4. Something will intensify that warfare possibly the raptured saints passing through the realm of Satan. 8. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. 9. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Dragon was cast to the earth, v. 9, Satan and his demons were cast out of heaven at the time of their original rebellion, but still have access to it. That access will then be denied, and they will be forever barred from heaven. Deceives the whole world, v. 9, as he has throughout human history, Satan will deceive people during the tribulation, c. 13, 14, 20, 3. After his temporary release from the bottomless pit at the end of the millennium, he will briefly resume his deceitful ways, 20, 8, 10. 10 Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Accuser, v. 10, see verse 9. Satan will no longer accuse believers before the throne of God because he will no longer have access to heaven. 11 And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Blood of the Lamb, v. 11, no accusation can stand against those whose sins have been forgiven because of Christ's sacrificial death, see Rom. 8, 33 39. 12 Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea! For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. He has a short time, v. 12. Knowing that his time is limited, Satan will intensify his efforts against God and mankind, and specifically target Israel, vv. 13, 17. 13 Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. 14 But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Wings of a great eagle, v. 14, not actual bird's wings, but a graphic depiction of God's providential protection of Israel. Wings often speak of protection. Eagles probably vulture, like griffins were the largest birds known in Palestine. A time and times and half a time, v. 14, 3, and, 1, half, years the second half of the tribulation, cv. 6, 11, 2, 3, 13, 5. 15 So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. 16 But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Earth opened its mouth, v. 16 a great army will come against Israel like a flood, v. 15, only to be swallowed up, perhaps in conjunction with one of the numerous earthquakes that occur during that period, 6, 12, 8, 5, 11, 13, 19, 16, 18, 
Matt. 24, 7. 17 And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Rest of her offspring, v. 17, Satan will turn his frustrated rage against every follower of the Lamb he can find Jew or Gentile. Commandments of God Testimony of Jesus Christ, v. 17, The revealed truth from God and Christ contained in Scripture. Obedience to God's word always marks a genuine believer. 13, 1 Then I stood on the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Then I stood, 13, 1, most manuscripts read he stood, referring again to the dragon, or Satan, see 12, 9, 17. He takes a position in the midst of the nations of his world, represented by the sand of the sea. A beast, v. 1, literally a monster, c. 11, 7, this describes a vicious, killing animal. In this context, the term represents both a person, Antichrist, and his system, the world. The final satanic world empire will be inseparable from the demon, possessed man who leads it. Rising up out of the sea, v. 1, the sea represents the abyss or pit, the haunt of demons, c. 11, 7, 17, 8, 20, 1. The picture is of Satan summoning a powerful demon from the abyss, who then activates and controls the beast, Antichrist, and his empire. Seven heads and ten horns, v. 1, this description is like that of Satan in 12, 3. The heads may represent successive world empires Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome and the final kingdom of Antichrist, c. 17, 9, 10. The final one is made up of all the kingdoms represented by the horns, see notes for 17, 12. 10 is a number that symbolizes the totality of human military and political power assisting the beast, Antichrist, as he controls the world. Horns always represent power, as in the animal kingdom both offensive power, attack, and defensive power, protection. Daniel shows that the human Antichrist will rise up from these ten kings, Dan. 7, 1624. John picks up the numerical imagery of Daniel 2, 41 42, which refers to the ten toes on the statue's clay and iron feet. The Apostle sees the beast as the final world government the anti, Christ, anti, God coalition headed by a revived Roman Empire, having the strengths of various world powers, yet mixed with weakness and ultimately crushed, see Dan. 2, 32 45, 7, 7 8, 19 25, see 12, 3. The crowns show the regal dominion of this confederate kingdom. Blasphemous name, v. 1. Throughout history, every time a monarch has identified himself as a god, he has blasphemed the true god. Each ruler who contributes to the beast's final coalition has an identity, wears a crown, exerts dominion and power, and therefore blasphemes god. 2. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Leopard, v. 2, this is a metaphor for ancient Greece, alluding to the Greeks' swiftness and agility as their military moved forward in conquest, particularly under Alexander the Great, see Dan. 7, 6. The leopard and subsequent animal symbols were all native wildlife in Palestine, familiar to John's readers. Bear, v. 2, a metaphor for the ancient Medo, Persian Empire, depicting that kingdom's ferocious strength, combined with its great stability, see Dan. 7, 5, Lion, v. 2, a metaphor for the ancient Babylonian Empire, referring to the Babylonians' fierce, all, consuming power as they extended their domain, see Dan. 7, 4, 3 And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, 
and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. His deadly wound was healed, v. 3. This statement could refer to one of the kingdoms that was destroyed and revived, that is, the Roman Empire. But more likely it refers to a fake death and resurrection enacted by the Antichrist, as part of his lying deception, cvv. 12, 14, 17, 8, 11, 2 Thess. 2, 9. World marveled, v. 3. People in the world will be astounded and fascinated when the Antichrist appears to rise from the dead. His brilliance and attractive, but deluding, powers will cause the world to follow him unquestioningly, vv. 14, 2 Thess. 2, 8 12. For so they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? 5 And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for forty, two months. Was given, v. 5. The sovereign God will establish the limits within which the Antichrist will be allowed to speak and operate. God will allow him to utter his blasphemies, to bring the rage of Satan to its culmination on earth for three, and, one, half, years, v. 5, 11. 2 3, 12, 6, 13 14. 40, 2 months, v. 5, this is the final 3, and, 1, half, years 1260 days of the time of Jacob's trouble, j. 30, 7, and Daniel's 70th week, Dan. 9, 24 27, known as the Great Tribulation, c 11, 2. 12, 6, C. Dan. 7, 25. This last half is launched by the abomination of desolations, C. Matt. 24, 15. 6 Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. His name, V. 6, this identifies God and summarizes all his attributes. His tabernacle, v. 6, this is symbolic of heaven. Those who dwell in heaven, v. 6, the angels and glorified saints who are before the throne of God and serve him day and night 7 it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. An authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. Make war with the saints, v. 7. The Antichrist will be allowed to massacre those who are God's children, c 6, 9 11, 11, 7, 17, 14, c 17, 6. 8 All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Lamb slain, v. 8. The Lord Jesus who died to purchase the salvation of those whom God had chosen was fulfilling an eternal plan. From the foundation of the world, v. 8. According to God's eternal, electing purpose before creation, the death of Christ seals the redemption of the elect forever, see Acts 2, 23, 4, 27, 28. Antichrist can never take away the salvation of the elect. The eternal registry of the Elect will never be altered, nor will truly saved people worship the Antichrist in the days of his rule. 9 If anyone has an ear, let him hear. 10 He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity, he who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. 11 Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Another beast, v. 11. This is the final false prophet, called such in 16, 13, 19, 20, 20, 10, who promotes Antichrist's power and convinces the world to worship him as God. This companion beast will be the chief, most persuasive proponent of satanic religion, c 16, 13, 19, 20, 20, 10. Antichrist will be primarily a political and military leader but the false prophet will be a religious leader. 
politics and religion will unite in a worldwide religion of worshipping the Antichrist, c. 17, 1, 9, 15, 17. Out of the earth, v. 11, this is likely another reference to the abyss that lies below the earth. The false prophet will be sent forth and controlled by a powerful demon from below. The earth imagery, in contrast to that of the foreboding, mysterious sea in verse 1, may imply that the false prophet is subtler and more winsome than the Antichrist. Two horns like a lamb, v. 11, this describes the relative weakness of the false prophet compared to Antichrist, who has ten horns. A lamb has only two small bumps on its head, very inferior to the ten, horned beast. Like a lamb, v. 11, the lamb imagery may also imply that the false prophet will be a false Christ masquerading as the true lamb. Unlike Antichrist, the false prophet will come not as a killing, destroying animal, but as one who appears gentle and deceptively attractive. Spoke like a dragon, v. 11, the false prophet will be Satan's mouthpiece and thus his message will be like the dragon, Satan the source of all false religion. 12 And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Exercises all the authority of the first beast, v. 12. The false prophet exercises the same kind of satanic power as Antichrist because he is empowered by the same source. He, too, will have worldwide influence and reputation as a miracle worker and speaker. Causes To worship, v. 12, he causes is used eight times of him. He wields influence to establish a false world religion headed by Antichrist and to entice people to accept that system. Whose deadly wound was healed, v. 12, cv. 3, 17, 8. This likely refers to the carefully crafted deception of a false resurrection after a false murder to inspire allegiance from the world. 13 He performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Great signs, v. 13, the same phrase is used of Jesus' miracles, John 6, 2, which indicates the false prophet performs signs that counterfeit Christ's. Satan who has done supernatural works in the past, for example, Exodus 7, 11, must use his strategy of false miracles to convince the world that Antichrist is more powerful than God's true witnesses, ch. 11, including Jesus Christ. Fire come down from heaven, v. 13, the context indicates that the false prophet continually does counterfeit pyrotechnic signs in order to convince men of his power, and also in imitation of the two witnesses, 11, 5, 14 And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Make an image, v. 14 this refers to replication of Antichrist that is related to the throne he will erect during the abomination of desolation, halfway into the tribulation period. This will happen in the Jerusalem temple when Antichrist abolishes the former false world religion and seeks to have people worship him alone as God. The false prophet and Antichrist will again deceive the world with a clever imitation of Christ, who will later return and reign from the true throne in Jerusalem. 15 He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Speak, v. 15 The false prophet will give the image of Antichrist the appearance of life, and the image will seem to utter words contrary to what is normally true of idols, cps. 135, 15, 16, hab. 2. 19. Cause. To be killed, v. 15. His gentleness is a lie, since he is a killer, 7. 9. 17. Some Gentiles will be spared to populate the kingdom, Matt. 25. 31. 40. And Jews will be protected, 12. 17. 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, 
free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, a mark, v. 16, in the Roman Empire, this was a normal identifying symbol or brand that slaves and soldiers bore on their bodies. Some of the ancient mystical cults delighted in such tattoos, which identified members with a form of worship. Antichrist will have a similar requirement, one that will need to be visible on the hand or forehead. 17 And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Buy or sell, v. 17, Antichrist's mark will allow people to engage in daily commerce, including the purchase of food and other necessities. Without the identifying mark, individuals will be cut off from the necessities of life. Number of his name, v. 17, the beast, Antichrist, will have a name inherent in a numbering system. It is not clear from the text exactly what this name and number system will be or what its significance will be. 18 Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. His number is, v. 18, this is the essential number of a man. The number 6 falls one short of God's perfect number, 7, and thus represents human imperfection. Antichrist, the most powerful human the world will ever know, will still be a man that is, a six. The ultimate in human and demonic power is a six, not perfect, as God is. The threefold repetition of the number is intended to reiterate and underscore man's identity. When Antichrist is finally revealed, there will be some way to identify him with this basic number of a man, or his name may have the numerical equivalent of 666. In many languages, including Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, letters have numerical equivalents. Because this text reveals very little about the meaning of 666, it is unwise to speculate beyond what is said. 1. The main characters described by John in chapter 12 are a woman, a male child, and a dragon. Who or what is signified by each of these characters? Your response here to, describe the cosmic conflict recorded in chapter 12. What was slash is the outcome? Your response here, verses to consider, Job 1, 6, 2, 1, Dan. 10, 13, F. 2, 2, 6, 10, 19, Jude 9, 3, What will happen to Israel during the tribulation? Your response here, verses to consider, Exodus. 19, 4, Deuterium. 32, 9, 12, P.S. 91, 4, I.S.A. 40, 31, 4, What did John see in chapter 13? What did these characters do? Your response here. Verses to consider, Dan. 8, 23, 25, 9, 24, 27, 11, 36, 45, 2 Thess. 2, 3, 11. 5. How is the second beast described? 13, 11. How is he related to the first beast? Your response here 6. What is the image made by the beast? 13, 14. Your response here, verses to consider, Dan. 9, 27, 11, 31, 12, 11, Matt. 24, 15, 2 Thess. 2, 4, 7, Why is the mark of the beast significant during the end times? 13, 16. Your response here going deeper Daniel's visions and prophecies of the end times contain similar imagery. Compare this Old Testament vision with Revelation. Read Daniel 7, 128. One in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main facts. 2 Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. Three and four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. For the first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. 
I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Five and suddenly another beast, a second, like a bear. It was raised up on one side, and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. Six after this I looked, and there was another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Seven after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth, it was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Eight I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there, in this horn, were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. Nine I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated, his garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire, ten a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Eleven I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking, I watched till the beast was slain, and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Twelve As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Thirteen I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. 14 Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. 15 I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. 16 I came near to one of those who stood by, and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things, seventeen those great beasts, which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. Eighteen but the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Nineteen then I wished to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broke in pieces, and trampled the residue with its feet, twenty and the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, before which three fell, namely, that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. Twenty-one I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints, and prevailing against them, twenty-two until the Ancient of Days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. 23 Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. 24 The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. And another shall rise after them, he shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. 25 He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. 26 But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and destroy it forever. 27 Then the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. 28 This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Exploring the meaning 8, 
What added insights does this passage contribute to your understanding of the beasts in Revelation 12:13? Your response here 9, what promises are given of God's ultimate victory, vv. 9:14, 18, 22, 27? Your response here 10, read John 8, 44. How did Jesus describe Satan? Your response here, verses to consider, John 10, 10. 1 Pet. 5, 8, 1 John 3, 8, Truth for Today The Book of Revelation is the ultimate action thriller. Anyone who loves books filled with adventure and excitement will certainly love this book. The amazing revelation contains drama, suspense, mystery, passion, and horror. It tells of apostasy by the church. It speaks of unprecedented economic collapse and of the ultimate war of human history the war that will truly end all wars. It describes natural disasters rivaled in intensity only by the world, wide flood of Noah's day, as God will pour out his wrath on the sin, cursed earth. It speaks of the political intrigues that will lead to the ascendancy of the most evil and powerful dictator the world has ever known. Finally, and most terrifying of all, it describes the final judgment and the sentencing of all rebels, angelic and human, to eternal torment in hell. The book of Revelation is thus a book of astounding drama, horror, and pathos. Yet, amazingly, it is also a book of hope and joy with a happy ending, as sin, sorrow, and death are forever banished. Reflecting on the text 11, should the reality of Satan and his evil intent alter the way you approach each day? If so, in what ways? If not, why not? Your response here 12, given the fact that Satan is a sworn enemy of God and his servants, how can you practically and specifically better support your pastor and church leaders this week? Your response here 13, what insight or truth from this lesson do you find most meaningful, i.e. comforting or convicting? Your response here personal response write out additional reflections, questions you may have, or a prayer.